Hey, what's up, everybody? If you're a serious PDR tech and you want to learn a lot about paintless dam repair from the marketing to PDR experiences, this PDR podcast is going to be for you. If you're a DIYer and you want to just see big smashes and interested in seeing how things are done and this and this and that and fast and no talking and whatnot, then this podcast might not be for you. I have a lot of other videos and playlists you can go check out. But Again, if you're a serious PDR tech or maybe you're thinking about getting into paintless dent repair, this podcast is definitely going to help you. So anyways, my guest today is Steve Brown from Dent Mechanics. He's a serious PDR technician that does a lot of high-end vehicles in the Los Angeles area. I'm not going to be having a big, long podcast in this one. This is going to be straight interview, which I feel is very, very necessary and very cool as indeed. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get friggin' cracking. Right. What's going on, everybody? Now, here is my next guest. You probably heard him on my past podcast. I'm introducing Steve Brown. Steve Brown is a Los Angeles PDR tech, dent mechanics uh, CA out there on Instagram. And I'm welcoming him here because, as you guys know, my podcast is very visual now, and that gives me a chance to to showcase other techs about what they do, what kind of repairs, and explain their type of repairs. Now, Steve has been around for a very long time. Um, we we knew each other gradually, little by little, over the years. But I, I've become uh, really good friends with him, and he's one hell of a tech, funny guy. Uh, I'll let him tell a story here and there. Um, he's always got one of those. But other than that, we're going to bring him on board to check out his Instagram and, and really kind of break down some of his repairs. So uh, I want to wish uh, welcome you aboard here, Steve. So thanks for joining me and uh, and the podcast here, dude. So um, yeah, man, you are uh, you, you are one hell of a tech, dude. One hell of a tech, dude. Thank I, you. I just we were just I looking at some of your that. your work. I was posting it up here because we're gonna we're gonna get to that. Um, how long have you been doing dents now, dude? Started in uh, went to D Wiz in October of nineteen ninety four. You're a D too, huh? Yeah, my brother and I both uh, did D Wizard. So he started first, and I was like, "You're doing what?" You know, and he's like, "I'm taking dents out of cars," and I was like, "Okay, good luck with that." You know, and then he <laughs> saw his first paycheck, and I was like, "I'm in." You know. <laughs> Yeah. So he got me hired and then uh, I went, uh, he went the beginning of the year, I went to the end of the year. So I think I got home like the last week of October, or maybe like the first week of November of 94 and worked for them for about a year or so. And then, of course, we've all heard the lawsuit stories and everything like that that went. We, did they go know, they, we did, were, did they go after you? Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. yeah. Like full, full force. And they won a judgment against me. Um, you know, they just out muscled me, you know, the contract was still a new thing that lawyers didn't know how to get out of. And, you know, they went after me in Missouri and then came after me here in California. But the judges here said, you can't stop them from working. So I was able to keep working and, you know, just went out on my own and been doing it ever since wow. 1995. I was, uh, became independent. Wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. But, you know, listen. Had it not been for Den Wizard, I wouldn't have been in this industry. They taught me well, you know. Had By great all, teachers. Yeah. Ted was awesome, you know. So I got nothing bad to say except uh, it sucks being sued, you know. <laughs> you know, and I know the current. I know current Dent Wizard techs now, and uh, I know some higher up Dent te Dent Wizard guys. And um, obviously, the dynamic of that company has changed over the years, you know. Um, yeah. But anyways, uh, off that topic. Yeah, the old but, guy was a, was a little bit of a cowboy, and you know he, he was like, "I'm taking you down," and I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, yeah. I, I'm, you know, we're gonna get that in a second, but you know, there's, it, it wouldn't be Steve Brown bringing you on if we didn't hear one of these Hollywood stories, dude, you know, and, uh, before, cause we, we want to talk about some of your Instagram guys and we'll, we'll see, we'll, we're going to, we're going to go over like this repair, you know, ladies okay. and gentlemen, we're, we're going to go over, you know, his is after we're going to go over this one. We're going to go, you know, I, I don't know what you, what you, that's this, the, this the is after, one of the one yeah. I want to know. I want to know this one. Okay. We're going to talk yeah. about that. All right. Um, mm -hmm. how you got that, 
this always gives me a hard time. This 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 stupid crown up here, you know, the crown, there. yeah, you know the what crown, I mean? that that know. reverse crown, man. So we're, yep. we're going to talk about yeah. that. But first, uh, we we are definitely going to be talking about um, some of your stories, dude, or one of your stories, dude. <laughs> You, you, now you work on a lot of GTR story. Go ahead. Go ahead. (laughs) You you work on a lot of high end exotic cars. So you have, you go to, you know, quite a few, you know, I'm sure some residences that are pretty private and, you know, some, some, I would say high, high. I've signed many NDAs, which is non-disclosures, you know, so, you know, uh, different celebrities, you know, listen, Everybody thinks they're out there standing there with me while I'm doing the car, and it's that's not the case 99.9% of the time. But you go to their houses, you know, or their right hand man helps them, or you know, their their detailer, or you know, the house manager. But every now and then, you get like the hey, how's it going? And you're like, oh well, that's so and so, you know. So, um, you know, uh, one of the people that I didn't have to sign an NDA that was really cool was. Um, Mick Fleetwood, I did his, uh, his Bentley and I, it was a a buddy of mine owns the village recording studio. And so whenever I go there, it's like mega stars. So like I went one day and Coldplay was in there. I'm guessing based on the last name, you know, are you talking Fleetwood, like Fleetwood Mac that got, yeah, that that, that person. Yeah. 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 So he had a, he had a brand new Bentley Mulsane and the guy who owns the place is a customer of mine. So I bail him out. I was there twice in the last two weeks with different things. And, uh, his valet Parker gets out of the car after taking it from Mick Fleetwood, walks past the car and swings his big ass watch upward and puts a dent and a scratch down the side of the corner panel right in front of Mick Fleetwood and his like three day old Mulsane, which is like $400,000. And Mick Fleet was like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> the kid was his first week there. You know, he's only been working there like three days. And so Jeff, the owner, calls me. He's like, you got to help me. You know, and I run down there and I happen to be, you know, five minutes away. So I went down and I'm like looking at the guy You're like, does this guy look familiar? And then he turns and he's like, hey, Mick Fleetwood. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll fix that for you. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, you know, Bentleys, they have so much clear coat on them that I was able to color sand out the scratch, push a little bit on the dent and, you know, was standing there like, I need to take a picture. I need to do something, you know? And he was like, nice to meet you. I'm out of here. You know? And I was like, okay, bye. Dang. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then one day I was doing a dent there and this guy pulled up in a purple Jetta and I was like, who drives a purple Jetta? That's weird. And it was Rob Zombie. And oh like, shoot! Huh? Rob Zombie drives a purple Jetta. <laughs> like, shouldn't it be like a black Cadillac with like a skull shifter and you know, <laughs> you know, it's like his everyday get around car. So, it's like his daily. Yeah. His, his daily. Yeah, yeah. His daily's a purple Jetta. You know, it's weird. So yeah, but yeah, I mean, over the years of living in LA, you you know, you do a lot of people's cars. Well, well, let's talk about your daily, dude. Like your day. Like how your day is, because every time I call you, man, you're pulling your hair out. You know, we talk about yeah. the Keelys that used to, you know, work for both of yeah. us, you know, and um, yeah. hopefully Achilles he comes was back. Was a, yeah. A big loss not having him come back this year. Um, he was on his way and he got stopped and shut, sent back home, basically. So, um, you know, my day, I, the way I structured my business so that I was always busy instead of putting all my eggs in one basket. Like you, you rode with my brother. My brother's got that monster galpin. And in the early years, he didn't have to go anywhere else because they kept him so busy. And I was like, "Mm, you lose that account, you're done. You know? So I always diversified retail, body shops, dealerships, all in one day. And I just would make a route, you know, and start my day with someone close by body shop dealer, go out, boom, 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 retail, come back around, body shop, and then finish my day at a dealer where in the summertime, I can work till eight o'clock at night. And that's how you have those 2,500 to $3,000 days is by filling, you know, and hitting retails, hitting body shops, hitting dealers all in one day, and always being available for your top customers, you know? How do you do do that in LA? Because 
there is traffic everywhere. Do you seg se segregate like one day you're going to be in this area and the next day you're going to be in this area? Or do you go across town and I, just balls to the walls, go I, anywhere you got? So when I first, you know, as I was building my business, I told them I'm available for you five days a week, no matter what day. That way there was never a reason for them to call anybody else. Um, and so, you, you know, you become a hero. They don't ever call anybody, you know. And so when when they would call, it was always yes. And I'll try anything for you as long as you understand if it's not something I can't do, then, you know, it has to go to the body shop. And so I just became their hero, you know, and they always could count on me, you know. So what I do now is I have a couple of places that I specifically only do them one day a week because they're a little bit further out. So I won't go to them for service calls and the dealership service department unless I'm there that day. But my local dealers, I'm available for them five days a week, you know, and, you know, call me at six o'clock, I'll be there, you know, and that just kind of locks you down. You know, you don't have to worry about another dent guy ever being called, you know. So ba basically you are, you are, um, you, you basically give them top service, reliability, dependability, uh, mm -hmm. you know, all, all that stuff that goes in there. Sure. That's how you, that's how you're winning your your ingredients, shall I say, your yeah, recipes I mean, to keep accounts. I, I can give you an example of early in my career, 90s, one of my best dealers was the Porsche Ferrari dealership. And so that dealership got me into so many places and so many high-end clients because I was their dent guy, you know. So if you were doing Ferrari, you must be good, you know. And so I can remember, if you like stories, I was literally d undressed stepping into the shower on a Friday at six o'clock and my phone rang and they said, we have an emergency. And I was like, dude, I'm home. I'm getting in the shower. And they're like, Paul Allen, who's passed away now, you know, but, uh, was bought a Ferrari and they're on their way to pick it up. And somebody punched the car and they're on their way. And it's Paul Allen, you got to fix it. And so literally put my clothes back on, turned around and went back to the dealership, fixed the dent, tow truck sh showed up picked it up and it's like i could have set the building on fire they would have kept me you know they just uh so it's you know, job that's security how you build, basically yeah you build loyal customers when you're there for them and they gave me dents sometimes that i'd be like there's no way i'm getting this dent out but i'm gonna try it for you because you take care of me i take care of you you know well that's that's and, what i just said on like the little segment that i was saying about chris is that you know, they're, they're in the in the dealership market, there or wholesale market, shall we? That's what we would call it, I guess. Um, you don't say no. You no. you even say, though try. even though ninety nine percent of the chance, you know, even if you have that gut feeling that you can't fix it, you got to try. I mean, that's all they want you to do, right? Just think in your career, how many times you think you thought you couldn't do it, Dan, and then you started pushing on. You're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, mm -hmm. and then and then. You know, you and I both started a long time ago. There wasn't glue. There wasn't rubber tip tools or ultra with all these fancy tips or like, you know, we just had to push, you know, and not crack paint. And, you know, so that's how I got better was I would take on big ass dance and be like, I'll do my best. You know, what do you give me for trying for you know a couple hours? And they're like, well, I'll give you 150, 200 bucks. Done. I'll do it. But if I get it out all the way, what do you give me? You know? Yeah. And I would negotiate with them like that. And then it just became, Hey dude, go out there and give it your best shot. Let us know what you want for it. Yep. You know? and, 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 and I still yeah. have that dealership to this day, 27 years later, yep. it's been changed hands three times, but I still have it. I, I can, I can relate. I can relate. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy. Like you said that, we have this, we have this, uh, you know, thing in our mind that we think that we can't do it. And I can probably count 10 times minimum that those, those times where I thought I couldn't do it, it actually propelled me to go to, to the next level each time. Sure. I didn't mm -hmm. believe in my own skills. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, even a customer said, Hey, I just want you to try, you know, this is, you know, way back in the nineties yeah. and I tried and he goes, I, you know, Mike, you gotta have more faith in yourself, man. 
and oh yeah you yeah. know what i mean I, so. I, I mean i remember the video you, you put up years ago of the black miata with the basketball plus size dent yes uh, you remember that and you were yeah. like i just wanted to see if i could do it you know i mean it wasn't perfect but you did it and it was probably one of the biggest dents on a black car and you just went section by section by section until you blended it all out into something that was presentable you yep, know yep. yeah and that that miata was what was very tough steve and you're right dude like i had to do sections by sections and i think that's how we get through those big dents is by doing when we think that we're overwhelmed we just go okay we're, we're gonna do it like it's a, like it's a puzzle and we're gonna start in this corner where i'm familiar with fixing that part because i know i can get that part and then all of a sudden it just starts coming together yeah i definitely agree with the piece by piece because i mean early 90s no one told me how to blend no one told me about crowns no one told me about you know how to section a dent like i would literally just like go i'm gonna go over there i'm gonna push over there i'm gonna push over there you know um and then i started watching youtube videos and that's kind of how i found you um is watching videos of you way, way back in the day going, Oh, look what he's doing. Oh, okay. You know? Um, and then now 27 years later, you know, you can look at a dent and go, oh, okay, I got to knock down that crown over there and I got to push over here and I got to pull over there. And, you know, it's a lot easier to dissect a dent than to, than it was back then. You know, I was just raw, just like willing to try and, you know, didn't have as much we're, work. So we were, could... we were Christopher Columbus days, dude, right? We're yeah, exploring yeah. dents. And, and then it's, I used to tell my students now, I still tell them, I said, look, back in the day, I would fix a dent, but be scared to go do another dent, hoping I remembered how to do that dent. Like, I didn't know, right. I didn't know the why factor. Like, why did that dent come out so good? You know, you yeah. know, and, and when I tapped down, I didn't know, I was tapping down, but I didn't know you know, the benefits of tapping down. We didn't know pressure releasing and, mm -hmm. you know, we didn't know all the, the techniques Jeez. behind it. Dude, you know, I was pre, I mean, think about it. You started before me, but I mean, I had the master, we, you know, the dent wizard master, you pushed down, you didn't tap down. That's right. You know? So like there was no such thing as blending because we didn't tap, you know, we pushed. So, you know, we got to the point where I was like hitting the master like a slapper tapper, like Sal's kind of slapper tapper, yeah. but on a larger scale. And I would smack the master with a hammer just to shock metal down. And it was literally by trial and error. Like I would watch body guys in, in body shops, you know, that old school body shop guys that were like blending and, you know, using hammers and dollies and stuff. And I'm like, Oh, I can do that. You know, I can try that, you know, on a, on a softer scale. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Oh, look what I can do. You know, yeah. that well, that let's talk about too much. Let's talk about right. what you what you can do. All right, I, okay. I'm gonna so. I'm, I'm gonna go over to the screen here. Okay, uh, we're gonna talk about this dent right here. Yeah, look at that crown. All right, that was awesome. This is what yeah. I'm talking about. This reverse crown smile up there. You know, yeah. th that ain't easy, Dan. Like, no, no, you know, that was a. You so know. I know how I so, would probably, let me go to the next one too. Like, let me go before that one too as well. So yeah, that way the next one tells a story, you know, of how, okay. yeah, or that so one there. this and is, then, this is the real crunch in, in, in natural light. Mm -hmm. And this, this crown, dude, it that, was big. That, yeah, it was nasty. What, will you keep the camera straight, dude? So. Sorry, dude. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a pro like you. I'm just sort of like, Hey, look at that. What I did, you know? <laughs> what do you what are you thinking so, about this like uh, first of all give me an idea of what you're going to charge for something like this steve so this guy was a regular repeat customer um i think i charged him 700 dollars for that dent if it's been a few years okay so that's, you know that sounds that sounds like money at that good time price to me. yeah no it wasn't bad and uh to be honest with you it went quicker than I thought it was going to go. So I actually slowed down and sort of pretend blended, you know, like, you know, cause he's standing there watching me the whole time, you know, cause he's a good guy. I don't mind him watching me. He's a very cool guy. And, uh, I had to slow the process down because 
if you click to the picture with the tool on it, um, with the K bar, which was one of the first times I had just bought this at um, Mobile Tech Expo, and I was like, oh yeah. And I got the Kecko or the Cactus Green on there, and I mean, I pulled up two or three times, and that dent just like wow. That that's what we've learned over the to- over the days because we would either try to push that and poke it up or try mm-hmm. to tap it down prematurely yep. and really make a mess, dude. Like yeah. we would get it out, but we would make we would oh, yeah. put two hours of more work. You know, mm-hmm. then we could have we, we could have prevented it. I think you just you just said it. Like look at you pulling it right there and you pulled half of that that reverse crown out. Dude. Mm-hmm. And yeah. now that that what it did, it set you up for those pushes right above there. So it would want to yeah. go back to its to its shape. And my uh, you can you can lead the way from here, but that's Yeah, so from after I pulled the bulk of that dent with the tab, I started knocking down the crown you know, at, at the top sort of down because I needed to, that pressure, I needed that metal to, to relieve. And so that, you know, that large crown line at the top is not only do you knock down, but then you're left with an indentation. What, what kind of car was caused. this anyways? This is a Macan. And Porsche. so if you know Macans, there's no, like a Cayenne, you could pull that lower panel off on the older Cayennes. The new Cayennes, are, it's metal all the way down. So Macan, there's no access really. I mean, I wasn't about to pull that black trim off in this guy's driveway because, you know, they're well, real you, particular. You don't, you don't start that dent right, dude. You ain't finishing it right. <laughs> I mean, exactly. You know, so my main thing with him was it needed to be clean because he's so particular. Yeah. So I did a lot, of, you know, pulled that line out, and then I started tapping with a padded hammer that, it was pre the crown jewel. So I was using, you know, a rubber hammer and I was just don't, 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 you know, as to not create any texture. Um, and then there's a small hole at the bottom of the Macan door that I was able to fish a tool up and just pick away at all any little low that I had left behind. And, uh, you know, you can see from the finished pictures, it came out pretty clean and, you know, no drill, no holes drilled, you know. I, I, um, I'm pretty proud of you, dude. I was just going to ask you the next question. It was like, did you make an access point? Because, you know, I'm not afraid to make access points. I, I will tell the customer if I feel like I, I rather, this is my point and I'm, I, I, this is, and this is what you, you feel as well. Some people can feel like they can justify way more money without drilling that that's perfectly fine. I'm just more of like, hey, let me get the best results and I'll, I'll make an access point. If I can feel like I can get it to close to 99% or 95% making an access point, I'm going to do it. I'm going to let the customer know. Right. I'm not going to be afraid of it. Um, fighting with the so, wire. You must have got that out pretty clean, all with glue, just to go underneath and just tinker it out then. Yeah, I know. I mean, the glue did a hell of a job that Kecko or, you know, the K bar combined with the green cactus, right temperature, you know, it pulled like a freight train. Um, For me, you know, I live in LA. It's a lot of high end exotic cars. And, you know, early on in my career, drilling was normal, but not anymore. So I will always try to do the dent without drilling. And what like, makes you change absolutely. your mind about that? Like, why, why would you say not, not anymore? I just started seeing guys just blowing holes in doors for no reason. Mm-hmm. And I would say, well, what the hell did you drill two holes in the door for when you could access this dent easily, you know? And so it sort of separated me, especially in that high end exotic world, because you show up to a guy's house with a Ferrari and you pull out a drill, you're going to well, be asked to leave. Yeah. You know, yeah. so, um, except me, I just, you know, <laughs> you know, so I just sort of built a little bit, you know, look, did I do it back in the day? Absolutely. I thought it was a necessity, but as you learn with glue and, and getting better at finding ways into dents, it became a, a challenge for me so that I could say, well, I did it without drilling a hole, you know? And so that separated me from everyone else who around here who was drilling holes you know, and, and then it became like, well, if you drill a hole in a car that has a pressure sensitive airbag, you know, are you messing with the airbag? 
you know, who knows, you know, I'm not an engineer, but I, I guess we'll know. find out. Yeah. We'll find out one day. <laughs> somebody doesn't <laughs> well, I shouldn't it. laugh at that, but yeah, I mean, hopefully we don't find thing, out. You know, so, I think yeah. it's, you know, borderline problematic for cars that are higher end because you may or may not be doing something you're not supposed to be doing. So I try to shy away from it absolutely as much as I can, but totally admit that back in the day I was drilling holes because that's why I was taught. Yeah. So, well, listen, sort of I'm not a like drill a, happy either. I don't want to put my, you know, put that, put that out there, ladies and gentlemen, when we yeah, pick and choose our battles, you, do you know what it, I mean? Yeah, um, exactly. You know, I'm not, yeah. oh yeah, drill first. In fact, we are working on a car that someone has this fixed uh, right now and they drilled and it, it, if you're going to drill, you better get the dent out. But this person yeah. drilled and it just that looks is the like worst. crap. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? You know, there's, I don't sleep at night if I have drilled a hole in a car and then I didn't get the dent out. Yeah. You know, because then I'm yeah. like, oh, God. You know, well, here's a free you know, gift. So. We yeah. won't charge you for the tw- for the for the manufactured axe point. That's free now. Dude. <laughs> I call it the ventilation port, the, the custom ventilation port. You know, yeah. I mean, I've seen guys drill so many holes in cars; they're like flutes. And the car, when the guy goes down the road, the car's got to go. You know, where yeah. you're like, I can't yeah. believe you drilled five holes in that door. Like, mm, you know. Well, so. I, I want to move on to your next one, dude. Okay. Okay. Um, let's if, if I can. Well, you didn't show that. Did you show the finished product on the did. Lacan? Well, I'll I'll you do did? it one okay. more. I'll I'll do it yeah. one more time. Let me let me pull it up here. Uh, let me, where where did, where is your freaking where's your den at now, dude? Um, I'm looking right. for it. Hold on a second. I'm gonna pull it up here. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I'm gonna here's a click click click. So here it is. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, and then I'll pull I'll pull back a little bit. So yeah, I mean, you 20, got that freaking 20. body line straight, dude. Yeah. You, you, and you yeah. didn't make any access points. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, I want to talk about. And it, was, and it was a good paying job. Yeah. What about this one? What car is this? Oof, this poor guy, man, boy, was he upset. So this is a Porsche. Um, I believe it's Carrera, or whatever, but rare color called Mexico Blue. So Smurf he blue. was like, <laughs> yeah, I believe it's called Mexico Blue. Um, he was moving some stuff around in a garage and a bed frame fell on it. So big, heavy wood. And, you know, he was basically told by the body shops, you know, body, you know, all the body work, repaint this and that. And, uh, you know, it was a rainy day when I went out and did it and, you know, took my time with it. You know, you can look at those two pinches on both ends. It was pretty significant, you know. And, well, uh, I can see came, that came you you pulled most of the bolt the bulk out, and now you got to deal with that crease, and especially yeah, that yeah. this curve down yeah. here on the on the bottom, yeah. right? Yeah. And you got some deep points here. You know, everybody thinks that this is just going to pop out. Anybody who doesn't know you these know, dents, <laughs> you know, a bulk of it does, but then you still that's the easy part. That's what I'm blue saying. Tab on then then, boom, you're, you know, then the you're left with the is. with the long. Basically, it creases a long pit. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, yeah, that was a good, probably ten inch long crease. So and, you know, here you go again, jumping right to the freaking great results. But how did you do it, dude? How how did you get? So you can see in that last picture, you saw the tail light out, right? Yeah. And so the cool thing about those Porsches is you take that tail light out, and there's a couple holes right upward in there, and the tool went right into it. You know, just perfectly. So, um, I would definitely say that my picture taking and video taking (laughs) skills have improved since I did this dent. So, I mean, look at me. I'm exhausted. And you got a haircut. I was a mess. It was a rainy, cold day. Uh, It was, uh, you know, the heat gun was on one to keep me warm and two to warm up the paint. It was, it was a rough day, but it was inside and, you know, you can see it was rain in there and, uh, so I look like what I tool been, what literally. tool did you do to, to to remove that? I love the ultra with the little rubber cap on it. So, you know, regular ultra, you know, whatever size it is, you know, 35 Do you, or 40 do you switch your tips though when you go when you're like when you're trying to go for the finishing or, or switch tools? I or, do. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. So, I'll do the bulk and I'll move the bulk of the metal with a rubber tip tool because I mean, I feel like unless you're being stupid, you're not going to crack paint. You're not going to create sharp little bumps that you can't get out later. So if you go too aggressive early on, you're just going to raise those bumps to the top. And then what? 
you try to color sand them out, you're not going to, you know, you're going to wind up burning through the paint. So start smooth, start clean and clean. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, and so yeah. if you go into aggressive and you bring out a sharp tip tool and you start creating some texture that is way too soon, you know, and then you get to the end of the dent and you're like, Oh, I didn't need to make that texture. So, you know, I was all rubber tip, rubber tip, rubber tip, well glue all the way till it was like 95%. And then I get out a real sharp tip tool and I just fill in those orange peels. Do you cold glue at all on any of that stuff, that, that, that type of repair at or that or particular not? dent? I did not. Um, but I do have cold glue. And I do brick it out every now and then, especially on a bigger dent like that, where I can be like, boom, you know, but one of the things that I try not to do is cold glue in front of a customer Yeah, because things happen too quickly. And then they're like, wait, there's a comma in the price of this job. And you just took 75% of it out in 20 seconds in front of me. And so if I got a customer that's lingering in front of me, cold glue never comes out. I'll get out the hot glue and I'll slowly pull, you know, because if I'm getting a thousand dollars or more for a dent, he's also got to feel like he's getting a thousand dollars worth of dent too. Value. And if you go and <laughs> yeah, and you go and snap a dent right in front of a guy and 80% of it goes away, he's like, wait a minute. <laughs> you know, so I learned that lesson with cold glue. Customer was like, I'm not paying you two hundred dollars for that. And I'm like, Do you have cold glue? Do you <laughs> do you have any of these things and he was, she was like that's crazy 200 dollars for that and i was like you gotta have the know-how you know yeah so that's just that's like what that what, what is it that that one saying where the guy what did you hear the ship thing the, the ship yeah, story yeah with the generator yeah with the yeah generator where they the they, he, the they call all these people <laughs> And yep. and he just does two taps and it starts and they they're like what what are you talking you just, it just took you like five seconds to do that you know you're charging me fifteen thousand yeah and so what he say he was like it was like he five did. bucks to come out and 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 the rest was because he knew how where to tap yeah yep, so. exactly you know or five bucks for the showing up and fourteen thousand nine hundred and ninety five <laughs> for knowing where to hit with the hammer yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm absolutely. paraphrasing. I know it's it's yeah. it's a little better than it's that. It's a better but story when you tell it. Yeah. Yeah. The beginning, yeah. 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 So. yeah. When someone knows how and to tell it. That guy with the blue car is, you know, one of those guys that every weekend is in a club driving somewhere. I mean, that job turned into thousands of dollars of customers. Because, I think that's what we overlook sometimes is like, we yeah. don't look at the, 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 shall I say the, the ripple effect of things when you do a good mm -hmm. job, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Steve, um, you know, I've <clears throat> got customers that have been referring me since 1995. And so the, the, I mean, just hundreds of, you know, downlines from them, you know, of like, Bob told Mike, told Joe, told Chris, told Steve, you know, and it all stems back to that one guy that you took a big ass dent out of his car and he was, he's on Ferrari chat or Porsche chat or Ren list and he posts it up and then people are calling me, oh, so-and-so. And I'm like, oh my God, I worked on that guy's car three years ago. And he's like, yeah, dude, he was talking about you on, you know, Ferrari chat. And I'm like, you can't buy that kind of advertisement. You know, you, you could pay thousands of dollars, but some guy talking about you on a blog to all his buddies who have the same kind of cars is golden. Yeah. You know, I agree. I, I yeah. agree. Hey, you know what? The, another key to success, man, you just, you, you do your job and you do it right. And if you show up on time, that's even a bonus. And that's, yeah, it goes a long way, yeah. man. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, look at the yeah. customer service these days, you know, and I'll be uh, one of horrible. the first to admit it. Horrible. Yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> It's very, it's very, my hard. girlfriend says it all the time. There is no customer service anymore. You know, no. nine times out of 10, if she's on the phone with a customer service rep, she gets hung up on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And they don't call back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to go to another yeah. one. All right. Okay. All right. So we're going to go, let me, let me pull up, let me pull up my screen. We're going to do a lot of D we're going to go this one, dude. Oh, yeah. All right. GTR. Yeah. So this is a GTR. Yeah. So that's a seven stage, I believe it was, they told me at the body shop that it's seven stage pearl paint job. Gosh, this dang. guy's car was in the body shop for three months 
trying to get them to match the color of the right front fender when it got damaged. So when this happened, he was like, no way. I'm not putting my car back in the body shop. And it was funny the way he closed, he closed me on this. I was like, no, dude, that's crazy. I'm not doing that. And he drove it to my house and put it in my driveway and <laughs> left the key in it and walked away and called an Uber. And I was like, what? And he's like, it's at your house. Just fix it. And I was like, okay. So it's, you know, a weekend well, did, job. I want to know what you did. How'd you do this dude? Like, well, I want to know, look, I'm, okay, I'm pretty so, good at the top part, but man, how'd you get that edge, dude? That edge was all glue. And then, uh, so it was a lot of glue pulling and then I popped the inner panel out. So no holes drilled. And I got a tool down in there and I just slowly work the lows, you know, that you see, I mean, obviously right above the body line there, you know, I was slamming that just hard. You got a tool glue. down here on this edge right here? Yeah, because when you come in, you can get from the quarter panel, take the inner panel off, you're able to slide a whale tail um, all the way in there. And it goes, you know, halfway down that from that upper body line to the wheel well lip there's room to get a small whale tail in there and so and I, I was no chewies no chewies why you were doing it or or how tight was it i i would say i did color sand this dent when i was done no uh -huh. you know not not hiding that i had a little bit of texture but i just took my time with it you know and i used a lot of heat and let me, I was let me, just let me, let me pull this up. Where this is yeah. it right here, right? So this this is when I was ninety percent done, and I was doing an update, and so you can see a slight low in the crease of, of the top and a slight low around the wheel well lip, and I pointed out in the picture or in the video, and I was just doing an update, and so when the guy showed up to get the car and I was going to do the final video, he freaked out on me and was like, no, don't put this on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, why? And he's like, uh, it's a long story. And I'm like, well, what? And he's like, well, I ran from the cops. So I didn't want it on the <laughs> internet. And I was like, well, it's too late. <laughs> so I never got my final, final finished product. That's video. a hell like, of a job though, dude. You can see it, I was close. I mean, it was just detailed. Even if you said this. that was the best you could do, I would have been, that was better than what I would wa even want to try. So, yeah, you know, I, we yeah. pick and choose our battles, Steve. And some like, I, I think, you know, at first glance we say no. <laughs> You know what yeah. I mean? A lot I, of times I, I, I ain't got time for that. You know, um, <laughs> and then my ego goes, no, nah, dude, you can do that. And then yeah. I'm like, okay. Well, it's, it bugs now us because we sleep in and we're like, man, I hope nobody else tried that, Dan. I mean, I, I just kind of, mm -hmm. you know, I just flaked it off, dude. But now that I, won't, yeah. I think I can do it, especially if you say no to something and then someone else does something similar or did the dent that yeah. you said no. Yeah. God, you I mean, see, look, you I live, see it. I live. 20 minutes away from Shane from All Out Dents. I got my brother. I got Mira. I got Lee. Yeah. I got, uh, you know, my brother's trained up Austin now. He's he's doing some some good stuff. You know, he's got a long way to go, but he's he's clean work. You know, he's, he's a hell of an artist. So it's going to, you know, he's going to do big things. And so there's a couple guys around me that if, if I say no and the person's persistent, they'll find someone to do it. Yeah. And Shane and I have gone back and forth with pictures where I'm like, oh, you got that one, you know, or, or someone will be closer to Shane and I'll send it to him. And then I'm like, damn, dude, you did a really good job on that. Dent. Like, how do you guys, like, how do you guys like interact? I mean, what, what made you, I know you came to some, obviously it was an MTE that kind of really connected all you guys to together. Absolutely. Uh, I met Shane at MTE. I called him over the phone one time and I said, Kind of like what I did with you. I said, yo, you don't know me, but I see your work and I want to send you people because I don't drive to Lockwood Center. And um, I, if, if I'm going to give it to anybody, I'm going to give it to you. And, you know, he was kind of like, wow, that's cool that you would give competition your, some work. And I said, with all due respect, I don't think of you as competition because I've never seen you. And I hadn't heard of you until... A month ago you know searching out something so we're not competition we're just two guys that do the same thing and we live far enough apart that we're not competing over the same customers and so i sent him a hood that i was like 
yeah, this thing is deep, dude. Like, good luck. And when he sent me the after pictures, I was like, damn, like, this dude's a baller. You yeah. know, like, and so I, you know, I'll meet you at MTE, you know, and then we literally were like, what's up? You know, and we've been <laughs> fast friends ever since. I mean, you know, we shared a room the last MTE. So I love Shane. And Shane inspires me, even though he's younger than me and had been doing it half the time that I have. He was taught by some guy. I don't know who he is. He was, All right, he's doing dance. You know, Shane kind of, I think, yeah. excelled past him. What, what's Watch that guy out for that, dude. <laughs> Watch out. I heard he's yeah. kind of shady, Watch dude. Out. So, uh, so uh, having someone like that nearby and someone who will zoom in on your fucking dance and be like, was that right there, Steve? You know? Yeah, he will call. He does do that, <laughs> he dude. Do yeah. that. He does yeah. that. I'm like, fuck you. I didn't even see that myself. What do you? What kind of camera do you got? You, but you know what? I think I think it's what really makes the 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 circle or you know this network is that you know you look at joe and you and yourself and you lee and all and, and there's there's many other guys in our in our yeah. little southern california group here they're all stand-up guys man you know what i mean we're, we're all work hard for, and we we, we, have, we, we at, care about our the character of, of one another yeah you know yeah the, i would say that table that we were all at that one day at that irish pub uh, after when it was it at uh vince's place yeah before vince oh moved, yeah oh yeah uh-huh. when we went to that irish pub afterwards and 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 we were sitting at that table you remember and i was like mike do you realize what's sitting at this table right now is like the baddest of bad dent guys from like la orange county san diego and then you look at like, let's just talk like money wise, you're talking about millions of dollars being made by an un-college grad or non-college grad, most of us, you know, guys that are tradesmen working with our hands, getting blisters and dirty hands, making millions of dollars, you know, combined, you know, at that table, everyone's a six figure plus income guy taking out dents. Yeah, you know, and it was then, a and powerful that, table. And then you take that and you times it throughout the world in the United States, right? And and yeah. the people who are listening right now are going, well, I, hey, don't count me out, you know. What I mean? mm -hmm. I, oh yeah, yeah. And people, there are guys that make a lot of is, money but doing it, this. But it I'm just goes to show you, you don't, you don't have to be that type of person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, it, the, it opportunity opens up when you network with people. Sure. It's just. It's there, just are, easier. there are definitely several guys in this industry that I would have never thought that they would be good at doing dents or that they they had what it took. But then when you see them do a dent, you're like, see? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the the hands, the talent that comes from it, you're it's in you. You know, granted, you, you can be taught it, but I think you've taught enough people to know that there has to be this certain thing that a guy has, you know, to to fix a dent. Like. I think you say it and someone else says it we're problem solvers so you got to be a problem solver you know if you can't take anything apart and put it back together you're probably not going to be a good dent guy you well, know you know you steve I, that, I think like, here's another thing too is like and i tell i preach this to my students i preach this to people out there you know at first we're all like even chris like hey i did this because you said i was gonna make a hundred thousand dollars right and yeah. at first we think it's the money is our drive but later on it just we're chasing the money right we're chasing the money we're trying to make as much go as fast as we can so we can make more money and then all of a sudden one day it just goes you know what i'm gonna stay on this dent because i care because i the care pride, the pride that goes into yeah it. yep and yep. once you yep. get to that point it's life-changing yep. you know yep. and absolutely I'm yeah. talking money wise, just opportunities. And now oh, the money just comes, it just, it, it comes tenfold after that. It comes. Yep. But if you got, if you, if you can't let go of how much money you're going to try to make, or you're just trying to get to a certain point, um, you either hate your job or you're not going to ever get to that point. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's yeah, what I, mean, I feel in the beginning. It's dent math. You know, when you're first getting started and you've gone past the training, and you're out there, you're like, if I just make $200 a day, that's $4,000 a month. If I make $300 a day, it's $6,000 a month. And, you know, you get into that 500 plus a day, all of a sudden, you're in six-figure income. 
And then when you get to the point where it's easy to make fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, that you're not counting it anymore. You're just yeah. doing it. You yeah. know, the money's coming. Your checks are flowing. The dealers are paying. You got your retail. You got your checks coming in daily. And then you're not counting anymore. I mean, I went for years without looking at how much I was really making. You know, just making the money, put it in the bank, pay my taxes, out the door. You know, um, you know. Then you know, you start getting a little competitive with my brother and the guys around me. And then it's like, well, if he's doing twenty grand a month, I'm gonna do twenty five. You know, if he's doing thirty, I'm gonna hit thirty. You know, and then you know. So, but it's it's more for fun as opposed to like. I got to make this. No. Money, yeah. Then you know? greed. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. 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 Definitely not greed because now I give, I mean, I got a guy works for me. You know, I, when I had Achilles working for me, I was just here, take this, take that, take this, take that. And then I'd be like, I'm going to do that Ferrari and that Bentley over there and hang out at one of my dealers and do five or six cars and then go home. Yeah. And then each guy was making money. I was making money off of them. And I'd be home by five going, yeah, these guys are out making well, me another there's five. A, there's a something that we, that we, when we get older, there's something that's very precious to us as we get older and we understand that money's not it anymore. It's never no, was, time. is time, right? You time. can't yeah. get time back, back. Yeah. right? So, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, look at this. You see this? <laughs> hey, they, they go down to the drugstore. It's called, you know. <laughs> That, that that stuff for me, you know. Her look at me. I, I haven't done it yet. I'm going to though. I'm going, to go. I'm going there, man. So actually, we talk about rare boy, man. Look at that. Everybody oh, I don't like, have that. Everybody's like, damn, got, Mike. I, I thought you were bald, bald, man. I'm going there. I'm getting there, dude. So, dude, I swear to God, I thought you were bald too because you always wear a hat. Well, first yeah. time I saw you without a hat on, I was like, wow. Yeah. Hey, that toupee's <laughs> coming in pretty good, dude. It didn't fall out yet. Dude. So, that, that you know, not only. Hey, not only am I a, that the well, you know what they say, right? You know, not only not only am I a member, I'm the president. Dude. I'm the president. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Steve, I All just right. want to say thanks a lot for coming on, man. I appreciate you uh, sharing some stories here. We're gonna do some. I'll bring you back on when you when we catch up with most of your other smashes, and uh, yeah, we, we'll we'll get Joe on with us too at, the, at this time. Okay. So, yeah. all right. Yeah, well, listen, they can find you. Your handle is dentmechanics.ca. You guys can see that. Let me let me pull that up too as yeah. well. So that way you guys can see his his little thing. And I'll put it up. I'll put it up on the right there on the top. Let me move myself ourselves out of the way. Right there, you guys. Dentmechanics.ca. Give him a follow. You're gonna find his videos and his posts super interesting. And as always, you're even more interesting in person there, Steve. So Thanks, all right. buddy. LA homie. Well, listen. All right. I'll let you go. We'll talk to you later, right, dude. Man. Have a good week, right, dude. Thanks. See you. You too, buddy. All right. See you. Bye. All right, guys. I hope you guys liked this video podcast. Let me know what you guys' thoughts in the podcast. What else would you like to see? Who would you like to see come on here? And someone keeps saying, hey, when are you going to bring Dent Owl on? Well, we're going to do that. We're going to, we're setting that up. Uh, towards the end of April. Uh, Dent Owl is a uh, tech I've trained, but he is super artsy. He's got a unique way how he advertises on Instagram. And this guy is just top notch. I'm going to get some pointers from him and hopefully he'll give us some pointers too when he comes on here. So look out for him in the, in the end of April, probably early May. Uh, when that podcast comes out. So again, thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button. And if you're on Podbean or, or, or iTunes, please leave a review. It helps us a lot. And thank you again for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.